Chautauqua Institute crowd. He lives over there, and uh, he lives there year-round. He braves the winter, too, I'll tell you. And that takes a lot of bravery because he has to get around with it. He's got a little little bike thing he runs around on, and he cackles as he's running around, and everybody knows him. And then at night, he, and in the winter, he has to have a horse and sleigh. Yeah, they have horses and sleighs over there. Did you know that? No, horse, drawn, sleigh. We've got enough news here. I'm just going to say Dunkirk Seniors, what a bunch over there. Chaplain is Josie Wazinski. And I want to say uh, they're going to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the next week. What a bunch they have over there. Mabel, great bunch, saving you all the time. Westfield, hey, we have seniors. We are running out of time. They told me I am finished with the news. If I don't stop, they're going to shut me off just like that, and that would be the geezer. I've got a little public service uh, announcement for you right now, and this is just for you, and the geezer will be right on as soon as we find him. Or wake him up. Wake him up! go. Here's a geezer, Mort Fletcher. He shoots from the hip. Mort, you're on the air as we speak. What's up? Well, good morning, Reed. Good morning to our, our flying guests and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Reed really talked about most of what I expected to say today, and that is about the problems with the proposed health care system coming out of Washington. But there are two areas of coverage that are extremely important and being neglected uh, even by Reed. Uh, one is terminal care. You know, there does come a, come a time in your life and you need to face up to it that you have to decide it's, it's too painful. Uh, it's not living to be on narcotics. So let me the heck out of here. Uh, the only other problem, by the way, is my favorite gripe uh, partly because it's emptied my treasury. Uh, one out of two people my age, and I've said this before, I know, but you can't say it often enough, one out of every two people my age is in a skilled nursing facility. It is extremely expensive, and Medicare does not pay a nickel for it. And neither is it being considered under the proposed plan coming out of Washington. So if you're a senior and you want to pass on your wealth to your children, you're going to have to do it now or make certain that they shoot you before, you, <laughs> the, before they put you in a nursing home or into a, more particularly, into an assisted living facility. Reed, thank you. Oh, thank you, Mark. Uh, one of the wild rumors, the crazy rumors that they're, they're, they're spreading, the anti-health uh, care changes here to make them for the decent for the people is uh, that uh, the seniors are going to have to go in every five years for counseling on whether they want to live or die. <laughs> All the stupid things I've ever heard. And I asked them, I said, well, you know, I called one and I said, you know, I'm interested in this. Well, they couldn't tell me much about it. I said, well, I just want to know, say I decide I want to die. Uh, you can't have, uh, you can't commit suicide in New York State. So what are you going to do? Uh, shoot me on the spot? Or are you going to give me a one-way ticket to Oregon where it is legal to have assisted suicide? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break, guys. Don't ask me about the ninja seniors who are terminal seniors who have a license to kill like 007. <laughs> we got a guy here, Dick Mega. He comes on regularly. He has more appearances on this show than any other person alive and well. Or dead, even. <laughs> Am I alive? <laughs> Speaks to me, it reminds me of poor Alan, dear man. What a guy he was. You took over his, uh, his uh, uh, column, huh? Yeah, but he's still there. Oh, he still took? Oh, yes. No kidding. Yes. I yes. heard long ago he passed on. No. Oh, okay. No. I thought that's why you took over his show. <laughs> no. His uh, program. You write. You still write a wonderful article for the Dunker Disturber, right? Mm -hmm. Observer. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dick. Um, first of all, where do you, how'd you get started in a birding? I mean, you're a real pro. How do you get started in birding? You was well, a kid. Did you collect like any young nests or something? See, I just see a young uh, man walk in the room just now. Uh -huh. uh, there are a lot of interests that uh, yeah. attract us, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, it just so happened that nature and the outdoors. I used to uh, 
At the time, we did not have a car, so a lot of us walked wherever we needed to go, to school, to church, to whatever. And living in the old First Ward, which is still the same First Ward in Dunkirk, uh, I would walk all the way to what we call the Cliffs, which was a uh, very interesting location east of Dunkirk, and a pretty good hike for, uh, you know, for anybody. And uh, I kind of enjoyed that because I would see a lot of interesting things, uh, plants growing there, the trees. Uh, and uh, am I doing something wrong? Uh, they said that you're rambling. I'm rambling? <laughs> no, continue this. I'm kidding. He said that the public PSA is well, now ready to roll, but, but we will wait until you finish your thought. They told me when I came on the show I'd be on with the rambling wreck, so you're <laughs> But in any event, uh, the outdoors, I think, is a, nature, a natural uh, attraction for, for anybody. People like to uh, go outdoors, and um, they learn to identify. Some people may uh, specialize in plants. Some people specialize in insects. Some people specialize in other things. Uh, it just so happened that birding uh, attracted me. I enjoyed the, the hawks. Uh, I enjoyed the... Uh, birds that were found around the, the home. In fact, my article uh, is entitled Nature. And uh, when I write for both the Post Journal and the Observer, uh, I, I see the Observer has now moved me to Sundays. Uh, they haven't replaced any church services yet, thank God. But uh, um, Is that a move up or move down? Well, you're asking me? Yeah. It's a move up, naturally. Sunday is a better t better place to be, huh? I, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if the circulation is. Increased. It is higher. It is higher because a lot of people go down and buy it at the newsstand. Could be who don't yeah. have a subscription. Yeah. So I bet it does go up. You get yeah. more people. Yeah. So and uh, I, I see this young man here running the camera. Uh, mm -hmm. He has a lot of interest. I was very active in sports. I played uh, basketball, baseball, football. And uh, uh, I bet you played that one that has a bird. What's that, badminton? Badminton, yeah. <laughs> I got you on that one, didn't yeah. I? <laughs> so, <laughs> in any event, uh, I, it, there are a lot of things that attract us, uh, when, especially when we're youngsters. Um, okay, I'm going to take a time out now. Okay. You finish that thought, and we'll pick up on it in a minute. It's PSA time! Ta-da! <laughs> Reach the stars, pull one down for you, and shine it on your heart so you could see the truth. And I could change the world, I would be the sunlight in your universe. You would think my love was really something. If I could, I'd change the world If I could, I'd change the world Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for the PSA. We have with us Dick Mega. Dick Mega is a regular here. He comes in and talks about birding, about bird identification, bird news. He's got a. Pr he writes an article on uh, nature. He took over from Alan Benton, who uh, is a famous uh, teacher over for Perdonia for many years, Doctor right, Benton. Right. And he does a nice job. Uh, now you were talking about uh, just the fact that birding brings you outdoors. That's one of the big, big things about it, right? Right. Right. In fact, the, uh, as I said earlier, the article, then I don't know what the Post Journal does with the article. Every once in a while I see a copy uh -huh. of it. But the Observer highlights it on Sunday. Yeah, well, and, that's, uh, that's quite a feather in your cap. And, uh, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. All i got to do is buy a cap to put that feather in, right? Come over here a little bit you know, so they can get up. Quick. And um, the, uh, uh, the interest is, uh, it's, it's called a nature article. Uh-huh. It's funny because uh, I go into certain places and people who know me or read the article, I go into one place and somebody waves a finger at me and says, don't you write about snakes anymore. 
<laughs> so I tell the uh, people, <laughs> you know, they may, they don't like snakes, so I'm not supposed to write about snakes. So I will write about, uh, well, if uh, if we're in the fall of the year, there may be, people may want to know why the leaves are changing color. We'll get into that type of an issue. I uh, know why. Jack Frost comes down and paints them. Reed, I 